What's up, YouTube? We're back in the garage today. We're going to be finishing up the wiring for the uh, junkyard boat trailer project. You can see it here. Kind of been putting it off because we got snow and the trailer was buried out in the yard. So I brought it into the garage, let it dry out a little bit. It's been in here a couple days and I think we're ready to work on the wiring. I got a generic kit off of Amazon. I'll show you guys what we got here. This is the Max Hall brand. This is all incandescent light. I wasn't going for anything fancy right now. Just need something that gets me down the road safe. So these are incandescent bulb trailer lights. And uh, so the passenger side does not have a license plate light underneath and the driver's side does. I thought that these kits maybe came with an L bracket so that I could, uh, so I could put the trailer light, put the trailer light back here somewhere off the side of the trailer. I, I don't really like this style just because they hang off. Ideally, maybe I'd want something off the back, back here. I could, I know that this is a C-channel shape uh, that starts about right here. This is a rectangular tube of the original frame, and then this C-channel shape was welded to it. I know that I could drill two holes and surface mount this to the back of the trailer. Based on the height of the hinge of the ramp, I could probably swing the, the ramp down and it wouldn't it wouldn't hit the light. But I I think I'd want a better solution for back here. So I think we're just gonna go with the easiest route for now. But I'll leave extra wire in there so I can change it later. You can see there's a hole here already. I was thinking I could drill one more hole here mount these right to the, um, I'd call it like the step on the fender. And I'd leave enough wire so if I wanted to change it to the back of the trailer that I, I could just pull the wires through. So I think the first step is really just getting your kit outside of the box. This kit does come with a couple side marker lights. And I do have this hole on each side of the trailer in front of that fender. So I could tap these into the into the wiring as it comes through there. I already separated the green and brown wire is for the passenger side and the brown and yellow wires for the driver side. So I need to look under my frame here and see kind of what our best route is. I do have an open end on the end of this tube and on this tube. So I was thinking I could just split the send my green and brown down the down this side and the yellow and brown down this side without having to actually run it through like this center tube first since these are already open. So I might get my fish tape out see if I can get the fish tape ran up in here, get it poked out, and then I can grab this wire and, and pull it back through. For those of you that have not used a fish tape before, that is this metal uh, flat cable that the goal is to feed it through areas that you're not gonna be able to just pull wire. So this is the fish tape. Right there, it spools up that cable, that flat cable. And you can see there's a hole. Actually, you can't see. There's a hole in the frame right here, just in front of this spot where I want to mount that light. So you push this fish tape through that hole and it poked out the front of the frame over here. Now I'm going to get the I'm gonna get the wire. I'll try to zoom in on 
out of there so you can see. So you grab the end of the fish tape that has a loop on it, you put the wire through it, and you bend it over so that it makes like a chain link. And to keep that wire from pulling off, you can just tape it onto itself after you folded it over and through that hole. And you don't need much tape. You have to peel the tape off then when you're done pulling this through. But now, now that I have that attached, going up through the frame and attached to my wire, I can pull that through to the back. And you basically just reel it back in to the fish tape. Snagged up in the front a little bit. Sometimes you have to push the wire in to get it started. Close, so with some snag. I think it's here. Yep, there it is. So that's how you use the fish tape. Gets me all the way back to where I need it. And sometimes they get snagged in there, and, and you can push and pull the wire back and forth. But do that, finish doing that for this side, get that clean. Uh, the extra wire cleaned up, like zip tie it up if you need the extra wire or cut it to length. And we'll do, we'll do the other side over there next. On the next step of the trailer light install, you need to establish where you're going to mount this ground wire. 
And I usually like to have a couple feet of the trailer wire sticking off of the front of the trailer. So this is the part that would plug in to your tow vehicle. If I'm using the ground wire that's on here, I'm only gonna get about a foot of wire in front of this hitch. Now I can always add more wire to this. Um, I think for now we'll just get this set onto the frame. You have to put a, an eyelet like this on the end of your wire. They have a lot of wire sticking off this kit. So sometimes you can loop it over or cut it off. I think because I'm using the appropriate gauge connector for this wire, I'm just gonna cut off the extra. You only need a little more than a quarter inch. And a sharp wire cutter. So take the wire and put it in your eyelet connector. Grip it down. Make sure it's on. Then you can take, what I'll do first is take my screw. I usually have to have clean metal for the ground wire to get good connection, I can clean it up and get it down to metal after I make my hole. I just back it out. So I can put my eyelet. On the here. And you don't have to crank it down. By over tightening this, you might spin this eyelet around and tangle the wire up. But this is snug enough to hold that. And if you break that screw off, you'll just need to make another hole. So if this ends up being too short, I can always lengthen this wire and pull more wire out from under the trailer. But you'll want to zip tie the wires out of the way. Now ideally, maybe I could have ran these wires through this tube and had them come out the front all the way up by the hitch as well. Uh, I've already got it pulled in there, so I'm just gonna leave it for now. So we'll, we'll tie this up later after we get some of the other stuff done. We're back at the rear taillights again. So looking at the hole that's in this step, this uh, fender bracket, it's a little big for what I'm putting on there. I don't really want this light to, you know, possibly tilt in there. And the light is sticking out a little further than the fender. So I think I'm gonna line up the side of the light with the side of the bracket here so that this light is fully protected I'll just have to try to mark two new holes there. And really, I can just scratch them in there. So now I've got two marks where I can drill my holes. Might just keep it at the same elevation as this one. Make sure my bolt fits in there. Can 
see there's a little chase right here for these wires to lay in so you don't pinch them. There's a foam pad on here. You can leave that on. That's so light. It doesn't sit right on the metal. And I think these lights ground through the wherever it mounts. So those two uh, bolts that come off the back of this are actually making the ground for this trailer for the lights. If this doesn't work because this is all painted and bolted together here, if this if these lights don't turn on, then I've got a grounding issue. So I might have to I could run a a small pigtail of wire from off of one of these bolts back here. And run it back to the frame somewhere because I don't I'm not sure if this will actually ground through all that painted material so I'll get this mounted just so I can show you the wiring The kit did not come with that eyelet that we put on the front ground wire, and it does not have any connectors for hooking up the light from the frame of the trailer to the wires on the light. I'm sorry, from the wires of the frame of the trailer to the wires on the light. So you'll have to come up with your own solution. These I had here, these are just like a butt connector. These are not waterproof. If I had the right stuff here, I'd probably use a waterproof connection. Just twist the end of the wires. These pre-cut lengths are pretty long for this connector. You can see it almost goes through the entire thing. And realistically, you only need it to go about half. So I'm just gonna snip off some that's here. So I've got a quarter to a half inch sticking off. The ones on the lights, uh, those are okay. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be too long. It's about half. Um, just want to jam it in. I usually twist it when I poke that in there. Take my tool. Crimp that in. Same on this brown one. Twist it on when I'm feeds on there nice. Crimp it. I always pull on them just to make sure they're connected. And then all you're doing here is matching up your colors. So yellow to yellow. Make sure your wire is pulled out of the way on the back so you don't pinch the wire.
light is on. I think it looks pretty good on there. Now I could wrap some electrical tape around these connectors just to keep some more stuff from flying in there. And then all you're gonna do is, because I, I'm not sure that I'm gonna keep these lights right here, I'm gonna take this extra wire and I'm going to kind of wrap it up and zip tie it up under the trailer. We'll do the other side next. I don't really need to show you guys that. And maybe I'll come back and just show you when everything's set. And there you have it. First test. And we have lights. I was worried about that ground issue because these the bolts on the back of the light are what ground out the light to the trailer but because all these parts are clamped together and painted i don't think there would have been a good ground so what i did was i added a self-tapping screw you can see it right here i put a self-tapping screw through all of the plates that sandwich together so we've got some connection going all the way through now that might not be a permanent solution but again i'm not sure if i'm keeping the lights where they are anyway but this way i can use at least use my trailer legally so like i said maybe i'll find something that fits a little nicer on the back of the trailer this will do just fine for now